good morning beautiful people so i have the uh trailer here i'm about to pick up this dumpster that one but i figured while i am here and while i have a bin off the trailer i could kind of dive into the reaving side of this conversation and just showcase it in case anyone is interested and unfamiliar with why you go reaving over winch right So watch while I pull the dumpster up where this plate shifts down and pulls dumpster on. So when you purchase your trailer, you're gonna, really there's three options, but basically there's only two. You have winch driven, reaving driven, and then you have hook lift driven, but hook lift driven is probably few and far in between. Um, basically no one that I've ever heard of has bought a hook lift trailer, but I have seen a couple online. Um, they are very expensive. And quite frankly, I think you're better off buying combo cans and getting a hook and a, um, cable attachment on your dumpster rather than buying a hook lift trailer because at that point you're going to spend way more money and it's probably not quite even as good as a cable trailer in my opinion for a couple different reasons but let's leave the hook lift trailer out of the conversation for now we're going to talk just simply reaving and cable now either way you're going to have some form of attachment source at the end of your trailer when you go standard rail, you tend to get these hooks. When you go with the proprietary brands, you tend to get like a traditional hook with an open face, um, and then that'll latch onto a D-ring. In my case, because I went standard rail, I don't have D-rings. I have the actual enclosed space on the dumpster that actually has that, uh, tab would be a fair word to call it, um, has that tab that you can grab onto. Now, this does make it to where attaching a snatch block is much more difficult but if you go reaving you don't need a snatch block anyway what a snatch block does is essentially runs from your winch in the front down to the back adds the snatch block and then runs your hook back up to the front and then feeds your cable through it so essentially you're adding a secondary point for pickup okay the benefit of the reaving is that you don't need that because the reaving system actually uses hydraulics right here and feeds the cable not just once, not twice, but actually three times from the point of leaving up front until it actually gets to the back of the trailer. On a winch system, if you take the snatch block out of the conversation, you're just pulling from there, or you're, pull, you're pulling from the back to the front, right? So on a reaving system, you start right, let's see if you can get in there. You start right there, feeds down, feeds up, feeds down, feeds up, and then goes from that point to the back of the trailer. Now, the big benefit of that is your snatch block is gonna do that to some degree. It's gonna half your load. This is actually gonna use the hydraulic rams themselves to push this plate in that channel and actually pull the dumpster up with a lot less strain on the trailer. The hydraulics are much stronger than your winch and much less likely to fail 
And every time you do one of those loops, you essentially cut your strain in half. Now, secondary benefit to the reeving system over the winch system. If you see here, my cable stays straight, loops, stay straight, loops, stay straight, loops, stay straight. So when you're dealing with a winch, it's constantly winding up that cable and the cable is gonna wear out really badly over time on a winch system because it's constantly in that wound up state. When you go to the reeving system, your cable stays straight, which prevents a lot of the fraying that you might run into. And then on top of that, now, if ever I have an issue, it basically boils down to one of two things. I'm replacing the cable or I'm doing maintenance on my hydraulics. Now the hydraulics can fail completely, but that's super unlikely. Basically every hydraulic failure you're gonna have is gonna be as simple as go take it to a hydraulic shop, have them do all the maintenance to it, reseal everything, and then put it back in place, call it a day, okay? Worst case scenario, I pull a couple pins and drop new hydraulic rams in there. With a winch, you're basically putting all of the strain on that one winch and over time, the motor on that winch is gonna give up. If you look at the price point difference between a hydraulic ram setup with the reeving and a winch system without reeving, your winch system is probably gonna be 1,500 to two grand to replace a nice strong winch. Might be a little cheaper if you do all the labor and stuff yourself, but somewhere in that one to $2,000 range. The reeving upgrade was about two grand right off the bat. Now the reeving with pony motor, different conversation, but just to have them do reeving is about two grand. So if you buy a winch system, you're probably gonna wanna have a backup because eventually it's gonna fail, all right? In my experience, you get one to two years out of a winch system on these trailers. Could it be better? Absolutely. Could it be worse? Absolutely. Could it be a lot more difficult and worse? Absolutely. So. From a financial standpoint, I don't think people talk about this enough. From a financial standpoint, if you're gonna own and operate with that trailer for more than one or two years, you're basically gonna bust even whether you go reeving or winch anyway. Now, if you go reeving up front and you have that trailer for let's say four or five years, you're gonna almost definitely save money. The reeving system will be less expensive and more powerful. So it's basically a no-brainer. Now. Reeving system, if we go, winch is out of the conversation. Let's say you just, I've sold you on the reeving, you wanna get reeving. You have the pony motor option, which is uh, probably hard to see, but mounted up there up top. And then you have the electric option. I have zero experience with electric reeving, but it would allow you the opportunity to run the whole trailer without the starting of the gas motor every time and it will give you the extra power of the reeving system without, uh, without having to you know, spend a crazy ton of money to get the pony motor. Do I think the pony motor is necessary for an under CDL operation? No. I do think it is awesome. I've pulled up five ton dumpsters in the dirt and pulled them onto the trailer, not even pulled up underneath it, uh, and it's done it no problem. Now. Could it probably do it with a 10 ton dumpster? I guarantee you it'll lift it up there without an issue. Now, not doing 10 ton dumpsters because I'm an under CDL operation driving a 2500. So maybe the pony motor is overkill, but the benefit of the pony motor is that I don't have to worry if, let's say I do 10 dumpsters in a day, I never have to worry about a battery charge. The, the truck and the trailer and the pony motor are just gonna keep working, keep working, keep working. If you go electric reeving, you're running off of the batteries and the mercy of if you run a cable from your truck to the trailer, the mercy of how much charge can you put back in those batteries as the day goes. So it may be worth it to get the pony motor. It's probably okay without it, but I, I don't have daily experience with it, so I can't recommend it necessarily. So in summary, would I go reeving again? 1000%. Would I go Texas Pride again? Probably, all right? If you've watched my other videos, you know they've had problems 
and they fixed them, but they've still had problems. The biggest difference, the 30 grand trailer, Ned Linn and Protainer to my knowledge are 45 to $50,000 and Keystone, I'm not sure of their pricing, but definitely worth looking at. So altogether, a lot of really good options. Go reeving, don't waste your time with a winch.